got the flag that I'm So YouTube team keep it clean Good morning What's going on It's Engraven here with another video And this is another episode of NFL questions from subscribers This is actually going to be a continuation uh, From our previous question from subscriber episode That featured Jose V The artist formerly known as Joe Nubo Y'all make sure y'all check out his YouTube channel It's down below in the description and again, if you want to be part of NFL questions from subscribers, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. Or if you're a patron, you can send it directly on Patreon. Uh, shout out to the Team Keep It Clean patrons. Love y'all. Appreciate y'all. And y'all remember, please keep spreading positivity to people. Please, 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 please do. Uh, tell your family you love them. Because sometimes uh, we may take family uh, for advantage. And we, since it's family, and I, and I need to step this up myself, but since his family, we may already know, we know that they love us and they know that we love them, but still it's nice to let people know. Uh, so reach out to your family, cousins, aunts, uncles, brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers, grandfathers, grandma, everything. Reach out to them and tell them, hey, I love you. I was just thinking about you. That's it. Super simple. But anyway, I appreciate y'all. I love y'all and hope you enjoy this episode of NFL questions from subscribers. Right, next question. Speaking of tight ends, came from my guy Aiden. He said, Much love, Engraven. Long time subscriber. First time reaching out. Appreciate it, man. Can you see us? <laughs> Can you see us picking up Hayden Hurst? I can't be the only one that misses those three tight end sets and how we dominated with it. Thank you for your positive vibes each and every day. And like Hayden Hurst, I'm out. <laughs> it would be nice, but. Hayden Hurst ain't circling back around to be a backup tight end again. That's the reason why he left. It'd be nice. It'd be a nice luxury, but he ain't coming back around to be the, the third guy or even option 1B. Yeah, it's 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 all about the game and how you play it, right? No, but listen, oh, double he does H. Look like Triple H a little yeah, bit. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, he, I don't think he'd, he'd come back here, to nah. be honest, bro. You know, he wants to be – like, that's why he went to the Falcons. That's why he asked for a trade – he knows he's he was already drafted older, right? That's my thing. Oh, yeah. He wanted to get as much playing time as he possibly could. Uh, he had his opportunity at Atlanta. I don't think he was that bad, but he definitely didn't show out like I think a lot of us were expecting him to, and then the Falcons mm -hmm. went ahead and drafted Kyle Pitts. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I don't think that he would even come back to the Ravens, to be quite honest, and... Uh, I don't know if the Ravens would reach out to him. I mean, maybe they 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 kind of feel a little bit uh, you know, a little bit salty on the situation. I don't know. So, but yeah, I'm not a fan of it. <laughs> yeah. Next question came from my boy Nicholas. He said, "I just want to get your thoughts on a few things for this upcoming season. This year will give us all the unbiased information we'll need to know if it was really Lamar or if it was the receivers that were struggling in the passing game." Uh, I personally think it was both at times, but I hear the media and a lot of people only blame Lamar and say adding a receiver won't help when your quarterback can't throw. This year, Willie Sneed is on a pass-happy team, and Dez is a free agent and can go anywhere he wants. If Sneed does not have a better season and Dez doesn't get signed by anyone and Lamar has a better season with his new receivers, then we'll know that it was indeed the receivers. But if Lamar doesn't improve and Sneed and Dez ball out, then we'll know it was Lamar. Obviously, I'm omitting play calling and coaching, but according to most people that aren't Ravens fans, Lamar is the problem. So I'm going to leave those out. What do you think? Hmm. Ooh, he expressed a lot in this one. <laughs> um, I, last year it was it was just it was just a mix of everything, really. Um, there were times when Lamar, when he would be off. Uh, one of the things I think Lamar was off the most last year. Especially with Hollywood, well, yeah, just with, with everybody, but especially with Hollywood, was the deep ball. Yeah. Um, with the deep ball, him and Hollywood just it, it just was not working out for the, the majority of the year. Lamar sometimes he would either overthrow him or he would throw it late to him, and, or he would underthrow him, and um, they were they were just off with that. And so that that was part of it. And sometimes it'd be the receivers too. Sometimes the receivers they would drop passes sometimes, um, and, and then sometimes there would be confusion. I know everybody, um, obviously this didn't happen all the time like that, but everybody remembers that. I, I think they, I'm pretty sure somebody gifted, but the play where I think Willie Sneed and Miles ran, Boykin like ran into up, each other. Yeah, right into each other. Yeah, yeah. but um, I mean, so it, it was just a mix of a lot of things. And, and it's also play calling too. It's, it's just, it, it wasn't one thing. It wasn't where it's like, okay, it, here's that one thing. All right, that's it. It was a little bit of everything, a little bit of everybody. 
So hope, I, I think that's why the Ravens this year, they added to everybody. So nobody has an excuse, so to speak, because some people will say, oh, well, it's Lamar. Well, OK, they built up the offensive line. They made the offensive line stronger. So now Lamar can have more protection. He can have more time. He can make better decisions. Then other people say, hey, well, he needs more weapons. OK, well, they got Sammy Watkins and they drafted Rashad Bateman, drafted Tylen Wallace. And we'll see who else uh, makes the roster, who they keep from the receivers that they already had. Uh, and then with the play calling, kept Giro. OK, understood. Then you add T. Martin, you add Keith Williams. So you add some guys that have experience developing quality wide receivers and, and experience with the passing game and route coordination and whatnot. So everybody, the Ravens added to everybody's plate to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to be better. So I, I, I can't say it was just one particular part, but everybody was a contributor. Absolutely. So I agree with most of what you said. The thing that like uh, that grinds my gears, that, uh, that chaps my hide, I don't understand people that say, well, Lamar can't throw outside the numbers, so why, what's the point of even getting him a wide receiver, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> Just in general, I completely disagree with that statement. When you have a young quarterback on a rookie contract, and hopefully not for long, much longer, Lamar will be on his rookie contract. But when you have a young quarterback, you have to build the best possible offense for your young quarterback, whether or not you believe he is it or not, right? So just this whole idea that, Oh, what's the point of drafting a receiver for Lamar? There's no reason to sign Sammy Watkins. That, bro, you have to get, even if it doesn't work out, right? Even if it doesn't work out, you still have to see. see you still have to see. Because I think all of us Ravens fans said going into this offseason, you got to add two receivers probably, right? Yeah. Um, and the Ravens actually added three. So I, I love that move. It, it, to me, it's like I have absolutely no faith in Daniel Jones at all. None at all, right? But look what the Giants did for him. They mm -hmm. got him Kenny G. Mm -hmm. They drafted Kadarius Tony in the first round. Mm -hmm. They said, listen, we're going to find out if you're it or not, right? It doesn't matter whether we believe in you or not. You are a young quarterback on a rookie contract. Mm -hmm. We're going to build the offense around you. That's you what you Kyle have Rudolph to do. Too. Exactly, see? Mm -hmm. So that's what you have to do with a young quarterback, right? right? So it... I just don't understand the point that people make. What's why even draft a receiver? Like it's ridiculous to me. But yeah, that's how I feel about it. The next question came from my guy Rodell. He said, "What's up, my guy? I apologize in advance." <laughs> uh, he said, "Yes, I'm happy with the draft. Yes, I'm happy." EDC heard the flock crying about wants and delivered. And yes, we got one of the top five players I wanted at pick 27. All in all, I'm happy. Now I don't want to be that guy, and maybe it's the rumors' fault. But do you think we truly found our number one wide receiver? Could he really be the guy to go get us over the hump? Now, I love the pick, but as I said, I want to win like yesterday. Not in two, not in three, not in four, five, or even ten years from now. Yes, we absolutely needed a wide receiver, but when I hear about interest in Julio, nothing in the draft can compare. Julio, without a doubt, would have been your number one and make your wide receiver group top ten. A pretty good rookie that's not top three at his position doesn't do that. Now, uh, I'm super excited to see what he brings, but that's a ton of pressure to put on a rookie in year one. Looking around, I know it's a lot more to it, but the final four teams last year consisted of uh, Devontae Adams, Chris Godwin, Mike Evans, Antonio Brown, Tyreek Hill, and Stephon Diggs. All bona fide number ones and dogs. To me, at least right now, we still have more of a committee which could work, but still don't know if any of our guys forced the defense to think about double teams or anything. Really hope I'm wrong and all three guys go for 850 yards or better, but only time will tell. Ooh, that's a good one. That's a really good question. Um, this reminds me of something that uh, my guy Kevin Redline mentioned in one of his videos, uh, and he was talking about this same uh, subject with how – he feels the Ravens don't really have that guy at wide receivers, but they have those guys in a group of guys that um that that can all come together uh, to be uh, what's the word I'm looking for? 
I forgot the word that the, the the phrase that he used, but um oh they're sort of complementary to to mm-hmm. each other, but not that bona fide number one guy. Um and I yeah, like you said, I think time will tell. Um yeah, it'll it'll definitely tell. Now, uh with this Ravens offense, uh that, that sort of makes things a bit harder uh to really establish that number one guy. I mean, right now our number one guy is Hollywood. Uh, if you go by the numbers, you go by the targets, you go by the yards, you go by the touchdowns. Hollywood's our number guy, our number one guy. Um, Sammy Watkins, I think he was brought in to uh, to sort of give us that veteran presence, somebody that has all the experience in the world, especially when it comes to playoffs, uh, and somebody that's familiar with Greg Roman's system. Um, and then, of course, Bateman. Bateman, I, I think they also brought him in to alleviate some pressure, too. To alleviate some pressure maybe off of Hollywood, but maybe even put some pressure on Hollywood and put some pressure on the other guys too. Uh to let everybody know, like, hey, we still are, are looking and evaluating, and we're not gonna stop looking and evaluating. And then they went and doubled down with Tylen Wallace too. Um, but as far as that number one guy, yeah, I, I I do understand what you mean when you say, Hey, when you think about Julio and you think about any of the rookie receivers, you're like, no, they they not in his class, obviously not because Julio is Julio. Um, and he really would have been that guy for the Ravens, and he would have definitely uh, took this receiving group way up. Um, and I, I told people to, I still wouldn't even mind if they got him. I know they're not going to now, but I, I wouldn't even mind if they did. Might as well. But, yeah, yeah dude, overkill, man. Overkill. Yeah. Yep. Um, but, yeah, like you said, man, oh, that is such a great question. But, yeah, we, we will see. Does he take us over the top? Uh, I, I, I think – I don't even think it might be him that takes us over the top, but it's it's the receivers by committee that should help move this thing forward when it's crunch time the most. And I think the Ravens wanted to get some guys that have been established guys like both in the NFL uh, and in the college ranks too. Uh, And that's exactly what Bateman is. And with Sammy Watkins, he is that. He's been hurt a lot, but he is an established veteran receiver he's been hurt a lot though. And, and, and that, that worries me moving forward. But um, yeah, I, I think they were looking for more. So number one by committee, but not actually that guy, but we'll see. So <clears throat> Ravens fans, I believe, and I will die on this Hill. If, if this gets memed in like three years, I don't care. I'm going to say it. I believe we finally have our, our number one wide receiver in Rashad Bateman. I do. My my thing is what Lamar was missing in this offense. Yeah, he did have Mark Andrews, right? But but what he was missing on the outside was someone that he can trust, someone that he knows he can just throw it up to, and he will most likely come down with the ball, those 50-50 balls that even if the guy is covered, He's still going to catch it. He's going to go up and fight for the ball. He's going to snatch it out of the air, right? Lamar didn't have that. He hasn't had that throughout his entire career, and I believe he has it now in Rashad Bateman. When you watch him on tape, that's exactly what he does. He goes up. He snatches the ball out of the air with his hands. He fights for the ball. I think that we got our number one. Now, He. I don't think that in his first year you're going to start – obviously considering him like a top 10 top five receiver necessarily but it's going to take some time but i do think that the more that lamar and and bateman develop that rapport i think it's going to be a dangerous duo uh just for someone that lamar knows like okay everybody's covered i'm just going to throw it to bateman who's single covered and i know that he's going to go up and grab it right Okay. So I think that he's going to be that guy. I do. Uh, next question came from going to Walmart. Be right back. He said, hey, hope all is well with you and the family. Uh, continue to be the joy in people's life. Uh, quick question. Do you think Justin Tucker will finish his career with the Ravens or will he leave to become the highest paid kicker in NFL history with another team? Again, hope all is well and stay safe. Um, I don't think that he would become the highest paid kicker in the league again. Uh, well, he could, but I... With another team, I don't think it will happen again. You never know. And as far as him finishing his career with the Ravens, uh, I, I know he'll retire with the Ravens, but finish his career, I, you can never say never. 
Um, and you just never know because you would have thought that guys like Adam Vinatieri, uh, he would have finished his career with the Patriots, but he didn't because he went to the Colts too. And uh, who else? Even Matt Stover. Well, Matt Stover yeah. did finish his career with the Ravens, but um, you just that's the business in today's NFL. You just you just never know because uh, NFL it stands for not for long. And Justin Tucker has been with the Ravens his the entirety of his career since 2012, but. You just never know because, I mean, look at Ed Reed. Ed, if, if Ed Reed can go to the Texans and go to the Jets, then yep. Justin Tucker's not 100% safe. Suggs, too. Oh, yeah, Suggs with yep. the Chiefs and um mm-hmm. and the Cardinals. Yep. yep. Yeah. So, yeah, Tucker's not 100% safe either. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I'm with you. I, I Originally, I was going to say, yeah, he's going to be a Raven his whole career, but you're, you're right. I mean, I, I would have said the same thing about Suggs. I would have said the same thing mm-hmm. about Reed, right? So you, you're you right. You never know. Situations happen. Maybe the Ravens find a new kicker somehow that yeah. they like better than Tucker, even though, really, like, no way. Uh, but, yeah, I would like to think he will finish his career as a Raven. So, you know, yes. Yes. <laughs>